Mr. Speaker, Dan Freeman lives in Dartmouth and relies on government disability payments. He says, my grocery budget for one month is $100. If I spend more, the rent bounces or the power bill doesn't get paid. I rely heavily on food banks to survive, and by survive, I mean exist on a Nova Scotia standard, which accepts that the poor should be malnourished anyway. I'm unable to move to cheaper or more affordable housing as there isn't any. Milk in my coffee, butter on the bread, those luxuries are now taken from me, and I'll table that letter. Mr. Speaker, can the Premier explain how he decided that his budget, including $1.5 billion in unexpected revenues, would not offer any real help to people like Dan? The Honourable Premier. Mr. Speaker, I don't accept that uh, our budget nor, nor the spending that has happened doesn't benefit Nova Scotians. I just don't accept that, Mr. Speaker. We tabled a budget before this House, $14 billion of spending. I will assure you, Mr. Speaker, every single one of those $14 billion goes to the benefit of Nova Scotians. There is more to do in this province, uh, for sure. But to say that we're not supporting Nova Scotians, Mr. Speaker, I just don't accept that. Madam Leader of the New Democratic Party on her first supplementary. Well, this is what we're trying to say, Mr. Speaker. They're supporting some Nova Scotians, but not all Nova Scotians. And Dan is not alone. Food bank use across this province has skyrocketed. Groceries are up 11% year over year. HRM Council is looking for more land for tents. And there is no, no, no zero affordable housing to be found. Mm -hmm. We know that service clubs and nonprofits and community groups and neighbors are stepping up to help each other as they are struggling, but in so many ways, this government is failing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, why does the government think that this is an appropriate time to cut income assistance rates in real dollars? The Honourable Premier. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What, what I would say, Mr. Speaker, is we know there's more work to be done. We, we also applaud those community groups that stand up, Mr. Speaker. But just, just in this, in this uh, budget alone, the targeted spending, we, we, do, we do believe that targeted spending is important, Mr. Speaker. $45 million in housing initiatives, including rent supplements, Mr. Speaker, home, homeowner repair programs, and investments in public housing, Mr. Speaker, support for homeless and supportive housing. The member mentioned that. $8 million redesigning the foster care program, Mr. Speaker, early intervention. Mr. Speaker, these are important investments in Nova Scotians. They're investments in, these, in this budget, and the member will have a chance to support those investments in, the, in, the, in those Nova Scotians coming up. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party on her final supplementary. Speaker, income assistance is the key program we have in this government that is targeted towards the poor, and this government cut it in real dollars. Leo Rafuse is a senior from Berwick. He says, my wife retired during the pandemic and I have been retired since 2018. We both have health issues and along with groceries, we have not had money to get basic dental work we both really need. Alan Smith is a senior from Amherst who wrote to us recently when he had to cut back on essentials and on medication. While seniors across this province continue to struggle to afford medication, the government will collect over $64 million in pharmacare fees from seniors this year. Will the Premier agree to waive those pharmacare fees now while people are so seriously squeezed by the cost of basics like food and medicine? Honourable Premier. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there's been no increase in pharmacare uh, fees. There's a, a number of programs where uh, the government subsidizes pharmacare uh, fees for seniors in particular, but for others as well, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, you know, just to remind members of this House, we stepped up for seniors with the Seniors Caregiver Grant, $1,000. That's the first time ever this happened in this province, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> We, we will invest in Nova Scotians as we can, Mr. Speaker. But I know, you know, it's easy to paint the doom and gloom picture of this province, Mr. Speaker. But good things are happening in this province. There is more work to be done, Mr. Speaker. But to say the government's not supporting Nova Scotians is just not true. I don't accept that, Mr. Speaker, not for one second. The Honourable Member 